What's going on y'all? It's Gum Gum TCG here back again with another video and today we're going to be doing a new tier list. We just got a new ban list so we got to make a new tier list. We got to see uh, what is going to be viable in this new format and talk about it a little bit. So if you haven't seen the new ban list definitely check out my video I just dropped on that. I'll leave a link to that right above my head over here and um yeah red's dead so we gotta start making some adjustments y'all we had a tier list video before if you haven't checked that out go check that out i'll leave it in the link below uh in the description below but uh, before we get into anything, I do want to shout out Dueling Guard. If you haven't heard of Dueling Guard, they're the best TCG accessory company on the market. They make anime-inspired TCG accessories for all your gaming needs, and they make deck boxes, binders, and playmats. They are so beautiful and high quality. If you haven't checked them out before, go check them out. I'll leave a link to their website in the description below, as well as code GUMGUMTCG you can use for a discount at checkout. What? You haven't heard of Dueling Guard? Dueling Guard is the best TCG accessory company on the market. They have high quality deck boxes, binders, and playmats made for people who enjoy playing and collecting trading card games in style. They have tons of designs based off of fan favorite anime such as One Piece, Bleach, Full Metal Alchemist, and many more. They hit the ground running earlier this year making high quality TCG accessories with beautiful designs that have sold out many times, so if you haven't picked up any of their products, make sure to do so before they sell out again. I have a few deck boxes and playmats from them already and can attest to how they don't cut any corners when it comes to quality, performance, and design. I highly recommend their products and use them every time I play cards. Be sure to check the description below for a link to their site and use code GUMGUMTCG for a discount at checkout. All right, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into a tier list. So I have, I believe, all the leaders here. I think I'm missing Rob Lucci. Give me one second. That happened in the last one. Let me add him in here real quick. All right, y'all. I got Rob Lucci added in here. I know I missed him on the last one, but we will not leave the fella out this time. So, uh, I don't think this is in any particular order. It looks like, uh, Big Mom has made her way up here for some reason. <laughs> but we got OPO1, OPO2, OPO3, OPO4, Structure Decks. And then Rob Lucci's down here at the bottom. I don't know what's going on with that. We'll list them when we get to OPO3 form uh, leaders as well. But uh, we got a couple different tiers here. If you haven't seen the last tier list video, I'm going to explain these real quick. Tier 1 are going to be deck de decks that are topping tournaments constantly. These are the top end of the uh, high meta category. You know, these are going to be the top cut representations most of the time. And... Uh, what's stealing the most games, what everybody's having a problem playing against, and what is the best decks in the room. Uh, tier 2 is going to be right under that. You know, these are also going to break those top cut representations every once in a while and are going to see some good representation uh, at locals and big regionals as well, but will be most of the time beaten out by these tier 1 decks. However, a couple of these can slide their way up into the top cut. Uh, then we're going to have Rogue. Rogue is, you know decks that aren't as strong as meta decks you wouldn't define as meta but can definitely beat tier one and tier two decks if you get lucky or play your cards right however rogue is gonna be just a little harder for that to happen you know it's gonna take some skill a lot of time playing that deck knowing exactly what you're doing and your matchups so um yeah, rogues are get, rogue are going to be good decks that have a chance, but are not going to break that top cut representation very often whatsoever. Then we got scrub out. These are going to be your decks that you take to locals just for fun, or if you take these to a big tournament, you're just going to go like 0 and 8. Uh, there, you're going to scrub out. It's not going to be a good time. You don't have good matchups with anything. You're playing a bad list or a bad leader or whatever these are just going to be decks that are not very good however can still be fun to play you know you might take these to a locals for a good time and then we have don't play this uh it's pretty self-explanatory i would not play these leaders so uh i'm gonna skip over this black yellow big mom hold on let me get a drink here real quick all right so we're gonna start with zoro uh zoro was one of the big three red decks of uh the opo i mean all the formats leading up until we got that fan list so 
I'm going to say that Zoro took a big hit with this list. You know, Nami going to zero as well as the Dan going to zero and then Marco going to one. Zoro took quite the big hit. You know, they they hurt Zoro bad. And I think that Zoro's leader effect is still just very strong and that there's still all, a lot of cards that can replace some of the cards that got hit by them. You know, they could play Vistas in place of the Marcos. They could play more of a Whitebeard heavy package with Izo. Um, they still play all those events with Buggy, but I think that they're just going to have to ramp up their little fella count. You know, those one drops and two drops they were playing. They might play more Sunny Coons and more Sanjis from OPO4 just to get those 3k one drop bodies on the field that they can put a dawn under their leader and then a dawn under their bodies and start swinging i think they will also maybe play the dawn attached nami and they're gonna play uh, the saba od search card because they can grab that off a of buggy and then search for a straw hat card or a character and i could see them also moving back towards playing uh, a lot of rush luffy's and yeah, I think that Zoro is still going to be a strong deck. I don't think it's going to be tier one anymore just because of all the hits that it took. I think it's going to go right into tier two at the top end of it. Very strong. And uh, yeah, I think it'll still see some representation. It'll try and creep its way up in there. It just, it's going to have a tougher time doing it with the consistency that hit that it took. Uh, Law, I'm going to say is the same way you know they just took big consistency hits and those little bodies are what they need to put on the board quick to be able to get to their leader effect so without that they just are going to have a really hard time doing this and uh using that consistency using those searches multiple times a turn with the leader effect so i'm going to put him right next to zoro i think i'm actually going to throw him above zoro because law still has access to uh an insanely powerful color combo as well as tons of cards that are extremely strong as well and uh, they still have bonnie which in bonnie is a crazy good search card too uh next we're gonna be talking about the red green monkey d luffy leader and i think that this is just gonna go in rogue it, it's fine it's got the same color combo as law so it has access to that really strong color combo but with that nami hit they, they i mean they took a hit as well you know a lot of lists for this leader are straw hat and film so they'll play just a whole bunch of straw hat cards and they can search like their whole deck with the red nami or the green nami and now it just has a big consistency hit it's it's not that great of a deck anyway but now it's just kind of struggling a little bit harder than it was before uh next we got odin he's gonna go in rogue as well odin's got access to some really powerful cards in my opinion and if he's played right i think that he's pretty strong uh it just takes a good pilot, I guess, and the right cards in hand. But uh, we could see a resurgence of green after this new uh, ban list. And uh, I mean, Kinemon has was a threat for a little while in OPO2 format. It dominated over in Japan for a small amount of time too. So we could see that starting to come back as well as maybe uh, Kid, film Kid list. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna put him in Rogue. Next, we got Doflamingo, and I'm going to put this in Tier 2 as well. This deck is so consistent and so strong with that free advantage that it grabs. I guess it's not free, but extra advantage it gets with the leader effect and being able to stack the deck multiple times, knowing exactly what you're doing every single turn. This leader is very strong. The cards that it has access to are very strong, and blue is going to be a very strong pick. For this next format where there's going to be a lot of yellow in the room being able to control the board and get rid of things is going to be very useful and uh i think dofi does a great job at that so i'm gonna put him in tier two might move him up actually i don't know uh he, he's pretty strong though next we got blurple kaido and uh in my last video I had him in tier two as well. And I think that's where I'm going to put him. Same as Croc. I think that both these decks have the same potential and they're both equally as strong and their card pools are almost the same. You know, their color combo is the same. They're both super strong decks, super strong leaders and have a lot of potential. I think that they just have to have the right pilot and not go against a red deck. And now there's no red in the room. I think they have a way better chance, uh, especially Croc with the healing it can do with the new purple Croc. I think that that card is really strong. And going into this deck, uh, you can make it work and make it really strong too. Next, we got King. And uh, King has actually been topping 
Uh, he's going to go into tier two just because uh, the purple cards that they play and have access to are really strong. It's the same as Kaido. It's just kind of which leader do you like? A lot of people say that this king leader effect comes up more often than not. Um, and I don't know. It's weird. I, I don't know. I, I kind of just want to put him in rogue, but he has been topping. So I'm going to leave him at the back end of tier two just to make people happy. But uh, I did have him the don't play this category last time. But some people have just been making him work lately, so we're going to leave him there. Add Renewgate. Don't play this. He's banned. You'll get kicked out of a tournament. Uh, Monkey D. Garp. Uh, I'm going to put this in Scrub Out. I don't think that this leader's great. I think if you're wanting to play this color combination, just wait for OPO5 and try out Sabo because it's a lot better. But uh, still cool. I think it's just one of those decks you want to... Ooh. I think it's just one of those decks you want to try and play for fun. So, uh, next we got Kinemon, and he's also going to go here in tier two. I'm going to put him uh, above, no, right there behind Dofi. I think that Kinemon has a good solid chance now with all the red out of the room. Um, they have access to really strong cards. I think their biggest, toughest thing is going to be playing against yellow, though. However, they do have access to Odin, which can swing twice very large. And uh, a lot of these Supernova cards are very powerful. I think that Kinemon has a great chance to come back and shine as a new leader. Um, not new leader, but returning leader and threat in this next uh, little bit of time that we have before OPO5. Uh, next, we got Sanji. Scrub out as well. You know, just another fun deck. Ivankov, I'm going to put at Rogue as well. Uh, super strong leader and archetype behind it. Uh, super consistent and... Yeah, just a great deck overall. I think that he can definitely make a cut into the top cut, but uh, he's definitely not as strong as these other guys. Next, we got Magellan, and we're still talking about OPO4. In OPO5, Magellan gets a lot stronger. Um, actually, we are talking about with the Ultimate Captain's decks. So I'm going to say that since we have access to the seven drop kid magellan is a little bit stronger i'm gonna put him at the back end of tier two right there with king maybe above it because that seven drop kid is so good for magellan it's crazy the card gives a thousand to your leader for the cost of dawn minus one and since you went on minus one your leader gains an additional thousand for the turn so magellan becomes 7k on your turn and then uh 6k on your opponent's turn every turn once that kid hits the field it's insanely powerful and it can be very uh, you can abuse it very bad very quickly and uh it's a very consistent deck i think that it has the tools to be very strong and i'm going to put him right there at tier two next we got z uh i think i want to put this in scrub out too i don't know we got some big z defenders um at least for now i'm going to put him in scrub out he might go up to rogue once opo5 hits and we have more of those good purple cards but for now uh just more of a fun deck it's still so reliant on that 10 cost kuzan hitting the field and another deck that does that is smoker i'm going to put him at the top end of rogue as well you know i think that smoker is very strong and has access to very strong cards and a very strong mechanic revolving around cost and destruction but uh i think that it's just a slower paced deck and can have time dealing with uh, blue decks, which are going to be a big threat in this next meta because of all the removal they have. You know, Smoker, you're typically playing one body a turn until you get a big field established. And once that happens, then you start to distribute your Dawn and attack with them. But because you're playing one body a turn, if you're playing against an opponent that has constant removal, like Blue Croc, your cards are just going to be eaten up and put to the bottom of your deck and back in your hand. And it's just not a good time. Uh, next, we can finally talk about this Lin Lin, Black, Yellow, Big Bomb, and I'm actually going to throw her, this is surprising, I'm going to throw her into Tier 2. Uh, I think that she's very strong. I think the color card, the color combo is pretty cool, and you just play a very defensive build that relies on keeping all your life until you get to 10 drop Lin Lin, and you play tons of blockers and 2k counters and stuff like that. And once you hit 10 drop, you're just off to the races. And you also have the effect to heal yourself with this leader. Very strong. I think that it has some potential and might make its way into some top cut if played right. Next, we got Ace. And Ace took an involuntary hit in this list as well. Um, with that Marco hit. So, uh, I don't know. I feel like Ace is still kind of rogue. 
Ace is still strong. It just has a strong card pool with those events and being able to search them. Flame Emperor is a crazy card. So I'm going to put him in Rogue. I don't think he's Scrub Out. He's not Tier 2, though. I, I want to say he's Rogue. Probably Top End, honestly, because he still has access to really strong cards. Uh, next, we got Kuro. And I'm also going to put this at the Top End of Rogue. I think that Kuro is really strong. It got new cards in OPO 4, and it just hasn't gotten to break that ceiling because of red decks. And... I think that Kuro might be able to break into some top cuts yet now. Um, it's a super cool leader, super cool cards behind it, attack a lot of times. What else do you want? You know, it, it's pretty cool, and uh, I think it can see some play. Arlong, we're also going to put in Scrub out. Uh, cool color combo, just not the right leader for it. I don't think this reader, leader has the right cards. I don't think that it's the right effect. Uh, I don't know. It just doesn't feel as strong as Dovi, and it has a similar effect. You know, instead of playing a card off the top of your deck or like the new Moria leader that got announced, uh, playing one from your trash, this plays it from your hand. So it just doesn't feel as worth it as these other leaders that do a similar thing where you're going minus um, advantage in your hand rather than minus a card off the top of your deck or a card out of your trash. So I don't know. It just doesn't feel worth it to me and i feel that this leader could have been better and maybe we'll get some better cards for him to play with here soon but for now i'm gonna leave him at scrub out uh next we got nami and this shouldn't be a shocker to anyone nami's gonna go right here in the middle of tier two as well uh, I think that Nami's insanely strong, and it just had a, ma a bad matchup with those fast-paced red decks. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to move these fellas down. Um, now that those red decks are not in the picture as much, uh, Nami's gonna have a lot better chance. It has a lot. Uh, it has a better matchup against decks and games that take a long time, where they can mill out every turn just a little bit at a time and then maybe get one or two zeph hits in there and mill the rest out um nami's gonna see a lot of play people are gonna really be trying to make this leader work and if you haven't checked it out i have a second place deck profile from my friend buggy dianko of team east blue on my channel i'll leave a link to that right up here you can go check that out and uh yeah it'd be a great place for you to start if you're wanting to play nami Next, we got Iceberg, and he's also going to be Scrub out. You know, they got new cards in OPO4. It, the leader just... Uh, leaders that can't attack are just kind of bad. You know, they can have great effects. They can get you good advantage. They can do whatever. But being basically just so behind against your opponent, if they're playing a leader that can attack, I mean, they already have the big advantage over you. Iceberg gets around that a little bit by being able to play a big dude turn one and then swinging with it turn two. But when you look at like Vivi and Rebecca, they, they just struggle because they, they can't attack with their leader. Same with Iceberg. If they clear all your bodies, you're left with your leader, you can't do anything. You cannot win the game even if they're at zero life, zero cards and hands, and zero bodies on field. You can't win the game because your leader can't attack. So definitely a fun deck, fun leader. But uh, we're finally getting into the big dog, and that's going to be Katakuri. He's going right up at the top and i'm gonna leave him at the top of the top i think that katakuri is super strong it always has been it's just had that white beard matchup that it can't really deal with because i mean half half their really strong cards don't even do anything to white beard you know they have zero life by the time you can play 10 cost lidlin <laughs> you lose man your lidlin's not helping you and uh the seven cost lidlin like if they play that card and they have zero life I mean, Whitebeard just chooses to trash a life. They don't have a life to trash it. You just played an 8K vanilla for 7 Dawn. Like, now that that's not a thing and Zoro's not in the room either, Zoro being so fast-paced and Law being so advantageous against these other decks, Katakuri's really going to have that advantage over every other deck in the room. Life, life knowledge is an extremely powerful tool, and I don't think that people have grasped that yet. Like, grasped how powerful knowing what your opponent's going to hit out of life and knowing what you're going to hit out of life is and being able to move it as well it's so strong that leader is so strong and then the cards that has access to are really strong too i think they should have made a hit to tinkos lin lin at least when they made this new ban list but that's neither here nor there um category is going to be at the top uh, next, we got Red, Blue, VV, and I think this is also going to be a, a scrub out deck. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. If you haven't checked out my deep dive, go check that out. Uh, it's very fun to play. However, 
it's just still it's right there with iceberg you know you can't attack with it it's just hard to get ahead you get that advantage with the draw every turn but uh, i don't know i feel like you're it's just a fun deck you're gonna take the locals and have a good time with next we got green purple dofi and this might surprise some people i'm gonna put him at tier one i think this deck is really strong with the film package and it can really really prove it i mean it can really make some results uh it proved itself not too long ago i think it was just this past week with uh a regional top regional first place so uh if that doesn't prove it to you i don't know what will this leader strong the card pool strong it's crazy i think that it's going to be right up there uh not exactly with katakuri but it's going to be making top cut representation a lot next we got isho and i think this is going to go in the back of rogue i think that it's strong and the card pool it has access to is very strong it can do some cool stuff and if you play it right you can i mean you could definitely win your locals with it you might be able to squeeze up in a top cut now that there's no red uh or less red i guess i i keep saying no red but there will still be red in the room it's just going to be less and uh yeah i think he's right there uh, i'm gonna put rebecca right above him though uh i think rebecca's still super strong but it's main thing that rebecca was good the main thing rebecca was good at was playing against red and now that red's not in the room, <laughs> gonna be that much in the room rebecca's just not as strong i still think it's a strong leader that it just can't attack kind of holds it back so uh, next, we got Queen, and I think Queen's also going to be one of these top dogs this format. Uh, I'm going to put him right here above Dofi, though. Uh, I think that yellow, having access to yellow in a yellow format is just really strong, and I think that's what we're moving into is the yellow format. So having access to yellow and then that removal that blue gives you in one leader as well, like healing too, like I think the Queen is very strong. It just has a hard time when Katakuri starts to go 10 cost Lin, Lin. Okay, pass. 10 cost Lin Lin. Okay, pass. Like, when they just drop those 10 costs back to back to back, and they're hitting you multiple times a turn with these massive bodies, Queen just can't keep up with that. So it has a hard time dealing with that in the wrong... Like, if you don't have the right cards to deal with it. But uh, if you do have the right cards, I mean, Queen can definitely put up a fight against it. Next, we got Purple Yellow Croc. And i want to put this i'm gonna put this at the back end of rogue as well maybe above these other two uh, i think the leader's bad but the color combo is good you know you can heal yourself a lot with katakuri as well as purple crocodile but um yeah i guess that's all that matters in this like yellow format life rip format so being able to heal yourself is just pretty big i'm i'm actually gonna put him above some of these other guys too uh, i think that it's a decent deck i think that it could be better though some of the baroque Ward cards that we got are just not the best uh next we got promo uta yeah whatever scrub out uh vanilla based deck it's fine it's whatever some people make it work i i think it's just one of those fun decks though next we got monkey d luffy structure deck leader and i mean i guess i'll put this at the back end of rogue too i'll put him right next to the other luffy you know i i think just losing access to your nami searcher in this deck is just it's so hard hitting and i think that it's gonna make that deck struggle it wasn't seeing a lot of play anyway you'd rather just play zoro but um yeah i'm gonna put him in rogue next we got green kid and i'm actually gonna throw him up here right next to uh, nami kinemon and dofi because i think that film kid is a very strong option kid has been a strong leader for a very long time and has proven himself again and again with that double attack and then now with these film cards just get generating you a lot of advantage i think that kid can really come out on top of and they also have sugar and dofi now so yeah kid really strong uh blue crocodile i think it's gonna go right up there next to all these other guys uh i'm gonna say all three of these are on like the same level you know like katakuri is the big dog and then these are all like on the same level i'm not gonna put one ahead of the other or ahead of the other like they're all just right there with each other you know i think that um they all have a good matchup against each other and have a decent matchup against katakuri and they're all gonna see top cap representation as well Kaido, I'm going to put right here in front of King because I think that he's just as strong, but I like the effect a little bit more. Can close out a game. Uh, Purple Shanks, don't play this. Sakazuki, don't play this. Uh, Charlotte Lin Lin, I'm actually going to throw in here above the other one. 
because it has access to those same cards as Katakuri. I think that this leader is just a little bit stronger than the black yellow one because it has five life and the effect is a little bit, uh, comes up a little bit more often. And uh, you have the homies cards, you know, you could always do some cool stuff like with that. So yeah, I think Charlotte Linlin can see some, some play and some tops if played right. Uh, next we got Black Luffy. I'm gonna put him next to Smoker too because I think that he, he's, I think Smoker's better, but um, same card pool, just a different leader effect. Uh, yellow Yamato, I'm also gonna throw at the back end of tier two. You know, yellow in a yellow format, like I mentioned, it's just very strong. And this just doesn't have access to the 10 drop Big Mom, so it struggles there. And then next we got the ultimate decks. Oh, I forgot to do Rob Lucci earlier, sorry. Uh, Rob Lucci's gonna go right in here as well, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. And then now we have the ultimate deck, three captains, leaders, and uh, these would have been ranked a lot higher before this list, but now that we got this list, um, I don't know. I'm gonna put this Luffy at the back end of tier two. Uh, 6k leader is just very strong. However, just lost a big consistency with that Nami hit. Um, it still has access to some other really strong cards, though. I think that without 9 cost Newgate, though, uh, only having one copy of that makes this deck hurt a lot more than it should. And that's why it's just not as strong. Uh, next, I'm going to put Kid. And I'm going to put Kid um, above some of these other purple leaders uh i think he's right here i don't think he's amazing i don't think he's bad i think he's right there near the tail end of tier two he could creep up and catch a win um uh, but i don't know i think the one of the best versions of this these leaders play nami and uh now you cannot play nami in this so uh, if you haven't checked out my let me cook series i made a video on this red purple kid leader and uh i made a kid pirates version so if that interests you make sure to go check that out i'll leave that link down in the description below but uh, i think he's a super solid leader and uh i do want to say before we put this last leader on here if you're not subscribed definitely make sure to subscribe we're on the road to a thousand subscribers and if we hit that goal by the end of this year i will be giving away a box of opo5 to one lucky u.s subscriber so if you're in the u.s and you haven't subscribed and you want to win a free box definitely make sure to subscribe if you're out of the u.s make sure to subscribe too you know i make awesome content if you want to see more videos like this or deck profiles or anything of the of the sort uh definitely make sure to subscribe i drop videos every single week multiple times a week so love to see you subscribe and uh next we're gonna have the law leader and i think now this law leader is actually stronger than the rest uh i'm gonna put him right here maybe a little bit more yeah right there that sounds about right um super strong leader effect doesn't really need to play nami yeah, I think that this leader's super strong. I think that it just kind of, um, well, actually, I'm going to throw these all back at the tail end of tier two because we don't have OPO5 cards yet. So uh, I think that once we get those, then these leaders will move up the ladder a little bit. But for now, I'm going to put them right here. So uh, this has been my tier list. You know, I tried to make it quick. <laughs> We're coming up on 30 minutes here, though. So um had to talk about each leader at least a little bit and uh let me know if you agree with this if you don't uh put down in the comments what you don't agree with if you do let me know what you agree with uh i'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback uh you could always post into my discord if you're not a part of the discord make sure to go join the discord we're trying to get to 100 members if we hit that goal i'm going to be hosting a free box tournament for um the u.s if you're in the u.s you can uh join the discord and you're eligible to enter for that free box tournament and uh yeah I hope you've liked this tier list. Uh, I feel pretty content with it. I'm ready to see this meta shape out for the next month, I guess. Uh, we don't really have too long for this format left. So uh, still wanted to make a tier list talking about it. And I guess we'll see where it goes from here. But uh, thank you so much for watching the video. And I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.